evening, everyone. My name is Corey Schwabrau, and I am the Assistant Director in the Office of Student Transitions at East Carolina University. Thank you for joining us this evening, where we're going to talk about some tips and tricks for our out-of-state students who may be joining us at ECU this fall. Um, we are recording this session because it is one of our sessions for, as part of new student orientation. And it will be available on the ECU official YouTube channel after we are able to get it captioned um, due to accessibility um, laws and needs. And if you have needs further than that, we ask you to reach out to the Office of Disability Services. With me this evening, I have four wonderful orientation assistants. I'm going to have them um, go ahead and introduce themselves. And I'm going to start with Ashley. Hi, my name is Ashley Cook. I am a senior from Cary. I'm an elementary ed major with a concentration in reading, and this is my third year being an orientation assistant. Thanks, Ashley. Okay, Liz. Hi, I'm Liz. I am a junior this year. Wow, I'm a junior, and um, I am a business marketing major, and this is my first year being an orientation assistant. And where are you from? I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you. Hey, Carrington. Hello, I'm Carrington Keys. I am a sophomore. Um, my major is international business with a minor in political science. And I am from Raleigh NC. And this is my first year as an OA. Thank you, Carrington. And last but certainly not least, Justice. Hi, uh, my name is Justice Beverly. I am from Tappahannock, Virginia, but I've lived in North Carolina since 2003. And I am a psychology major with a minor in composite natural science. And this is also my first year as an OA. Awesome. So thanks, everyone. So the OAs will be here to answer any questions. Um, they come with a wealth of ECU knowledge and um, can offer advice and insight. Um, so if any questions pop up, um, please type them in the Q&A and I'll make sure that OAs and myself answer them. But for right now, I'm gonna share my screen and go ahead and share um, the PowerPoint that um, I came up with. So out-of-state students, um, approximately 11% of our incoming class is typically from out-of-state. So we draw um, students from all over the country, all over the world to ECU but the majority of our out-of-state students usually come from, Vir from Virginia, New Jersey, and Maryland. Um, so we're looking mostly at the Mid-Atlantic where um, most of our students come from, out-of-state students come from. So one of the most common questions from students and family members that we get during orientation when we do this face-to-face -face, um, is about travel and how to get back and forth from North Carolina to their home state. And so we're gonna cover some of those, those options right now. So one of the ways people travel is airlines. Um, Greenville, North Carolina does have its own small, very small airport. Um, American Airlines does fly out of um, Pitt Greenville Airport and um, they, everything connects through Charlotte. So if you leave Greenville, you'll go to Charlotte and then grab a connecting flight from there. Um, it's about two miles from campus, so it's really easy to get to via Uber or Lyft, um, grabbing a ride from a friend. It's really easy to, to get to the airport. Um, and then there's also shuttle services to and from the airport that hopefully will still operate um, in these times of COVID, but in the past they have had a shuttle service. Um, please make sure that you, when you look for the airport, that you're looking for Greenville, North Carolina and not South Carolina. Um, when I moved from Florida, my dad was very excited because he's like, oh, there's an airport that connects right from this town here in Florida to, to the airport in Greenville. And I said, dad, you're looking at the wrong airport. And he was very disappointed. Um, so make sure you're searching for the right airport um, and make sure it's the one in Greenville, North Carolina, not South Carolina because South Carolina has a lot more flights and we don't want you to be disappointed. <laughs> so make sure you're searching for the right airport. Um, Raleigh-Durham is also another airport that's, you know, fairly close by. Um, it's about an hour and away, hour away from, from ECU, um, so about 95 miles. 
And transit, ECU transit does do a shuttle schedule during breaks and holidays to make sure that students can get back to um, the airport in Raleigh if that's the choice they decide to make. So um, there's a schedule, you can find it on the ECU transit website and um, go ahead and um, you know, look for the transit schedule and it usually runs a couple of days before and the day at like um, the day before people would come back from break um, and it runs a, a certain couple of different times from then. Um, we also have a train in Wilson, North Carolina and Rocky Mount, North Carolina. So those are about 38 to 48 miles away, but there is an Amtrak. There is a bus shuttle that does run from the Greenville Butterfield Transportation Center, which is about a half a mile from campus. It's really easy distance to walk from campus and you can grab the bus and go to the Wilson um, Amtrak station. And that cost will be the shuttle the bus shuttle from um, Greenville to Wilson will be included in the train ticket. Um, so you're not paying like a bus fare and then a train fare, you're you're paying for both in one in one ticket. So that's always an option as well. Um, there is a Greyhound stationed again at the, the Butterfield Transportation Center, again, very close um, to campus. And then there's a mega bus that leaves from Durham and Fayetteville and stops include Charlotte, Atlanta, New York, Richmond, Washington, DC, Philadelphia, and more. Um, and you can look that up on megabus.com. And then ZimRide is a free ride sharing network that helps the ECU community find, post, and coordinate carpooling. So if students log in with their ECU email, um, their pirate ID and their password, they will find other people in the ECU community that may be looking for rides. We do get questions on whether or not this includes random people from the Greenville community, um, and it does not. You have to have ECU credentials. So you're usually looking at students who have um, students looking for students who may be being like, hey, I need a ride to Fayetteville this weekend. Is anybody headed that way? Or um, headed up to Virginia Beach to see my grandmother, you know, um, does anybody want to share gas and, and uh, ride? I'll, I'll give you a ride if you split the gas cost with me or something like that. So ZimRide is also an option. And again, you can find all these transit options on ECU um, transit website. One of the OAs would be so kind to put that in the comments or in the chat. I would appreciate it. Okay, so some tips and tricks we talk about. So we asked some of our out of state students who were former um, orientation assistants who came from Delaware, Virginia, New Jersey, um, what advice they would give when um, coming to join Pirate Nation. Um, from outside of North Carolina. And one of the big things they said was um, to be patient, to understand that things are different and that um, it's not gonna be the same as it was back home and to give everything a chance, um, you know, to try new things, to try things that may seem a little different. And, you know, if you're coming from New Jersey or I grew up in New York, um, so I'd never really had Southern barbecue before I moved here to North Carolina. So, um, you know, I was willing to try new things, but I was also um, been told over the years, you just kind of got to let it happen organically. Don't try to force anything. Don't try to expect that, you know, everything's going to be great right from the beginning and it's going to be perfect. There's always a bit of a culture shock when you go somewhere new, even if it's only a couple of states away. Um, you know, and that's for anybody going into college. I think the always would agree with me when saying, you know, college itself can be a culture shock. So when you're moving to a new state, that can also be a culture shock. So just be patient, take a deep breath, realize it's not going to be like it is in the movies, <laughs> that things are a little different and um, just be patient with yourself and the people around you. Um, some other advice they have is talk to everyone in your residence hall. Um, you're going to be spending a lot of time in your residence hall. You're going to get to know your roommate. You're going to get to know the people that live next door to you on different floors than you. Um, talk to everybody. This is how you make friends and you meet people. Um, remember that everybody's in the same boat. You know, most of you will be freshmen together and you're all coming to a new place to live and 
um, learn new things about ECU and that kind of stuff. So just talk to everybody and see who you connect with. Um, and, and I lost my words, but see, yeah, see who you connect with. Um, the other thing to remember too is, and I should have mentioned this and be patient, but um, not every roommate relationship is gonna turn out like the movies where you become best friends with your roommate. Um, it's okay if you're not best friends with your roommate. Sometimes that that relationship has to grow and grow through growing pains as you learn to live with somebody, and that's okay. As long as you both respect one another, it's going to be all right. You don't have to be best friends. You don't have to spend all your time together. So if you can kind of let go of that expectation, that will help a lot too. Um, it would be great if that's what happens, but it's okay if it doesn't. Um, so just keep that in mind. And that will also help and when you talk to everybody in your residence hall. If you're making friends outside your roommate, um, it means you're not relying on that person to be your only friend here at college. Um, and the other thing is to get social. So join clubs and organizations. If there's event, an event going on, um, it's going to be virtual probably this year, but go to it. Meet people. Um, find out what you're interested in. You're not committed for life if you want to go to a club meeting and check it out and see what it's about. You can go check it out, see if it's something you're interested in. And if it's not, that's OK. You just try something else. If it is something you're interested, in, that's awesome. You found something you want to do and get involved in and you'll meet people through. Um, but just try different things. Um, utilize our engage platform. And again, the OAs, if you guys would be so kind to put that um, address in the chat. Um, Engage has all our clubs and organizations on there and you can go in and if you want to find something that's in your major or if you want to find something that you're just interested in and you want to do some service or you want to do some help in the community, you can go and you can um, search that and engage and find what you're interested in. And again, it's not something you're stuck to. It's not something you have to commit to for life. Um, They'll tell you when their meetings are or how to how to get involved in their meetings. Um, like I said, a lot of it's probably going to be virtual for some of these clubs and organizations this year. Um, but there's over 500 clubs and organizations. So, you know, the best thing to do is um, get out there and get involved. Start meeting people. Um, you know, you're not going to do it just sitting in your room. And that's the important thing to remember. ECU is a huge community and there's lots of things out there, but you have to go out there and look for it. Um, so make sure you're getting out there and getting social. Okay. Um, so we asked them about traveling home. So we talked about travel a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about it some more. Um, if you don't end up bringing a car to school, Amtrak trains are a good alternative um, one of our students said that's how she would travel home. She wouldn't fly. She didn't have a car here at school, so she would just take, take the train home, and that worked for her. Um, another alternative is to make friends with someone who lives close to you at home. Um, there was um, someone that had their roommate, and they traveled back and forth to school together, did those seven-hour trips together all the time. So Zimride might be a good way if you don't know anybody from that's close to home here with you now, you could always jump on Zimride and say, hey, you know, um, is anybody headed to New Jersey? Or is anybody headed to Delaware this weekend? Um, I'll split gas with you and that kind of thing. Um, carpooling works really well. If you make friends from out of state, it makes getting home and back to ECU easier. Um, I'll have Ashley share in a little bit how um, she's helped get people to the airport because she lives out near Raleigh. Durham Airport and you know she's made friends and has dropped dropped folks off at the airport or picked them up and brought them back to school so that um, you make friends with somebody who lives near the airport and you can get there um, that easily and then um, you can also split the rides up so if you go home with somebody for break your family can bring them back so you kind of switch off on who's driving. Um, and this is a true story. Southern hospitality is also very common at ECU and your North Carolina friends may even ask you to come home with them for a break. So yes, very, very common. Um, Southern hospitality is, is truly here at play in North Carolina. I can vouch for that myself. Um, as a New Yorker, it sometimes still takes me by surprise, even though I've lived here for three years. And um, I love it because, yes, people will be like, hey, you know, it's it's a quick break this weekend. 
um, you know, why don't you come home with me? My mom would love to to have to meet you and have you stay with us for the weekend. Um, again, with COVID this year, things may look a little different. So we ask for your patience, but you know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's not unusual to go home with a friend that you've made here at ECU. Um, and this OA also said my freshman roommate would often bring me home cooked meals for her family if she went home for the weekend. So just kind of another way to to bring that Southern hospitality into play. All right, things to keep in mind. You are in a new environment, so keep an open mind. Things are going to be done differently. Um, it's going to be, like I said, kind of that culture shock at the beginning. Just kind of go with it. Have fun with it. Be open to new experiences, new people, new things. Um, you know, I once had a student tell me that she never said no to anything within reason, of course. Let's not go crazy. But if it was, you know, if somebody said, hey, let's go to this concert tonight or, hey, let's try this new restaurant or, hey, you know, my friends um, performing in the choir this this evening. Do you want to come with me? Um, go watch her. She never said no to that kind of stuff because that's how she got out and got to know the community. And that's how she got to know um, the people around her. And that's how she made her friends. She just kind of kept an open mind. And even though in the back of her head, she's like, no, I don't really want to go watch this choir sing. I'm not really into that. She went anyway because it allowed her to kind of try new things and do new things. So we, we certainly encourage you to, to kind of keep the, um, Keep your open mind. Um, another OA said, the best advice I can give is to really immerse yourself in the culture of North Carolina. What really made me feel at home was allowing myself to be open to new things. Um, for some people, it's trying new restaurants, um, cookout or Bojangles. Not really a thing the further up the coast you go. Um, so being able to, to try some of the best milkshakes in the world at cookout. Um, and just kind of immersing, immersing yourself in North Carolina culture, getting into that Southern barbecue and, and trying new things, that's, that's really important about making ECU and Greenville your home. About getting involved, follow your instincts. Like if something seems interesting and you really think it could be, check it out, see what it's about. Um, really look at engage check out what they're doing, check out what events are going on. Again, COVID's gonna make things a little bit different this year, but that doesn't mean you can't get involved. They're gonna be holding um, virtual sessions and social distancing events, I'm sure. Go, check it out. If it sounds good, go see what it's about. Um, and again, it goes to start researching what organizations sound interesting to you. Try something new. Um, what to bring with you? Bring decorations that remind you of home. Um, for some people, it's an outline of your state. For others, it's just a picture of your friends and your family or pictures of your friends and your family. Um, but whatever is going to remind you of home, because you will be, you will have some of that homesickness. Um, it will, you know, happen from time to time. So you want to make sure you have something there that's kind of familiar to help you kind of get over that hump of, Man, I really do miss home. And that's the other thing. It's okay to miss home. Um, you know, don't let anybody tell you that, you know, it's it's not. It's okay to miss home. Um, as long as you don't wallow in it or get stuck in it and immediately go running home the first time you miss home, um, you, you'll be okay. It's just, um, you know, allowing yourself to feel kind of like that. Yeah, I do miss home and that's okay. Um, the other advice about what to bring, pack smart. Um, North Carolina, especially here in Greenville, doesn't really get cold, really, really cold until January, February. So the important thing is, is don't bring all your winter clothes down right now because you can pick them up when you're, you're home over, over break and, um, and bring them back with you in the spring semester. Um, that's to say you're gonna want fall clothes because it will get chillier. It won't be 90 degrees every day into December, but you know, you don't need to bring your ski parka or, um, you know, boots or anything like that. We don't get a lot of snow here in Greenville. Um, every once in a while, it'll surprise us and we'll get a dusting. And if we're lucky, maybe an inch. Um, but for those of us in the Northeast who know how it really snows up there, we, we don't usually see that kind of snow. So um, it also doesn't usually get as brutally cold up there as it does down here. 
Um, it does rain a lot. I can see the OAs are posting in the chat <laughs> to bring an umbrella or a poncho. Absolutely. Uh, the joke is ECU, everyone carries umbrellas. So um, you want to go ahead and make sure that you do have an umbrella with you. Um, but you don't need to bring everything um, with you. We do have a Target and a Walmart and a mall in town. Um, and again, Amazon always delivers. So if you forget something or you need find something that you're like, oh, I really should have brought that, you can, you know, certainly go out and get it if you need to. Um, don't think you're in the middle of, of nowhere where you can't get to your things. So just pack smart when you come down. Um, don't show up with a U-Haul. Um, it's not necessary <laughs> to bring everything with you when you come when you come to college. Um, things about home, call your parents, let them know how you're doing. Um, you know, sometimes when you get to someplace new and you're trying out something, um, you're, you're in a new place, you kind of get so immersed in it that you're like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta call, I gotta call, um, somebody and, and let them know how I'm doing. Um, and I'm sure mom or dad will, will blow up your phone if you haven't called in a while, but you know, remember to connect with them. Let them know that you're doing okay and that everything's all right. Um, I've heard students that have said, hey, you know, I can't get home every weekend like some of my friends do to connect with my family. So I make sure I schedule time throughout the week to have that family phone call at home. For some people it's Sunday nights, for other people, it's Wednesday afternoons, whatever works with your schedule, but make sure you're calling home and connecting with your friends and your family at home. Um, this OA said, my parents would send a small care package once a month and my family and extended family would take turns writing me letters every week in addition to phone calls. Mail is awesome to get when you're at college. I think especially now, because um, I'm, I'm many years out of college, it was more likely back in the day um, to get mail you know, cards and care packages. And I think sometimes that feels like that's gone away because of things like email and text messaging and you can FaceTime. Um, so it's always fun when you get a package notification saying your package is at the neighborhood services, service office and come pick it up. So um, parents, if you're listening, do something cool and, and send um, your student a small care package once a month or whenever you can. Um, and students, like this OA said, set up a time where maybe a friend sends you a card and then you can send them a card back. So you're getting something in the mail and something tangible that you can get from home. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn things over to questions, but I'm also gonna turn things over to the OAs to see if they have any Thing they would like to add. I know Ashley likes to tell her story about um, getting people to the airport if they needed to. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I live probably about 20 minutes away from the airport. I live in Cary. It's like right next to Raleigh. So I always like to like reach out to the friends I know like during Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, you know, the big holidays when they want to fly home. I would say, okay, well, like, this is the day I'm going. This is the time I'm leaving. If it works for you, just jump in. I'll drop you off. And I normally don't charge them because it's on my way home. It honestly is like 10 minutes out of my way and it makes them feel better. And it makes their parents know that they have a safe ride home. Plus, I mean, I have driven that route so many times. I could probably do it with my eyes closed, but I won't. <laughs> but I won't. But um, it's just like finding somebody at ECU who can get you to the airport, can get you to the Amtrak station, can take you the half of the mile to the bus station. Um, and by not having a car on campus, you will learn to make friends. That's how I met my best friend. She parked in the closer lot. I parked in the farther lot. And when I would want to go to Walmart, I would say, all right, Haley, you going to Walmart? You want to drive me? So having a car is cool while it's there, but it's also not like you're going to be out there on your own without your car. Thank you, Ashley. Um, definitely. People have cars that they bring all the time, but then there's also um, the transit system. ECU transit is a great transit system, but then Greenville also has a great transit system that brings you around town as well. So. Um, transit is is definitely not a problem. We do get asked that a lot. Like what happens if my student can't bring a car? Um, we know parking went very quickly this summer. 
um, for a lot of different reasons. You know, what happens if there's if there's not enough parking? It's going to be okay because like Ashley said, you'll make friends with somebody that has a car or we have a great transit system that will get you where you need to go. So don't panic. I think also with that, um, I have a like a story for a story. Anyway, um, um, my one of my friends I met in my residence hall, um, she had joined a sorority and her big in that sorority actually uh, was from where she was from, which is Maryland. Um, at the beginning of the year, um, before she had joined that sorority, she had to get her parents to pick her up whenever, you know, she needed to go home, which was like a six hour trip. Now that she had a big who also was from Maryland, they just rode together. And, um, like you can meet, I'm just like, that's just a story to say that you can meet people like in the, like anything, any clubs and organizations, which is why we stress, you know, getting involved because. You meet so many people that you never even thought that you were going to meet um, people that you that are from your hometown that you never even knew were from your hometown. Um, and you can also meet people through like also Facebook. If you're not on that, um, there's a Facebook page that's ran by ECU as well. Um, they have um, people who are like, hey, I'm going home or hey, I need to go home. You can also, you know, look on there if you can't find anyone on the Zen ride or anything else. Uh, there's just so many options and so many different, um, you know, platforms where you can um, always find a ride. So don't stress too much about that. Like we said, if you didn't bring your car um, because of parking, but yeah, that's just a little bit. And also, you know, missing home makes going home a lot, you know, a lot better um, because, you know, when you're here, uh, you may get caught up in the moment or you're just, you know, mentally drained. And you just wish <laughs> like you were home. Uh, and then when you get home, it's like vacation, even though you're doing chores and vacuuming and everything. But it doesn't feel like it because you're just happy to be there versus people who may go home all the time and they don't even see home as anything special anymore. Um, so that's just a little spill for me. <laughs> And I will say for me, like, I'm not an out-of-state student, but I do live four hours away. So I did meet a lot of people that I would take home because I had my car on campus. So I would, like, text my friends, like, that I met through my residence hall. Or even if I met, I met one girl in class that I had. And um, she lived in Monroe. So I just dropped her off in Charlotte. And I headed home and she met there. So, I mean, um you can meet people very easily and most people are willing if it's on their way there and they really don't mind because they're most of the time they want company to ride with them. Um, so that way you're keeping them awake and you're talking to them and it's just how you meet friends and those connections. Uh, without a doubt, I will say that the Southern hospitality, uh, that is 100% true. Um, you know, given the fact I'm from Virginia and I knew absolutely nothing about uh, Eastern North Carolina barbecue. And a friend of mine uh, one day said, you know, we should go try out some Eastern barbecue. I was like, you know what? Why not? So we went. Uh, it was actually not, not as bad as I thought it was. You know, it doesn't match up to Virginia's barbecue, but it's good. I know I can't say anything. I still say I miss New York pizza. There's just nothing like New York pizza or New York Chinese food. Just can't get it here in the South. It's just not the same, but that's, but that's what Carrington was talking about. It makes going home all that much better um, when I go home to New York and am able to get those special things that I can't always get here anymore. Um, doesn't mean I wanna leave Greenville because it's not home because Greenville has definitely become home, but um, it definitely does make a difference. I know for some people, things that have come up is what happens if my child gets sick or what happens if I get sick here in Greenville? Um, you know, we have an excellent um, student health services on campus that um, you can be seen at um, and they have lots of different services that they can help you with that you may not even need to leave campus for. 
um, they have a pharmacy and a lab and they, they do different um, procedures. So I definitely encourage you to check out student health services and see what they offer. Um, but we also are home to Brody Medical School and Vidant Medical Center. So um, we are the premier location for medic medical campus in Eastern North Carolina. So there's no other place better to be in Greenville if, if something were to happen and you needed medical attention, this is this is where you'd want to be because um, you're going to get the best. Um, we have some of the best doctors, nurses, healthcare providers in um, North Carolina. So this is definitely a place um, you want to be if something were to happen. Um, hopefully nothing will, knock on wood, everything will be fine. You'll go through four years and just get a little cold maybe, but um, if something were to happen, we want to put people's minds at ease that that you're in good hands here in Greenville. Because um, sometimes that comes up a lot. It's scary for parents to get that phone call that says, hey, mom, I'm I'm actually in the emergency room right now because, you know, I fell down the stairs or, you know, I'm having a hard time breathing or something like that if they've got bronchitis or, or whatever. And, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. But um, we just want to assure people that Greenville's a they're all nodding at me, so they agree with me too. <laughs> um, Greenville's a good place to be if, if you have concerns like that. Um, trying to think what else we want our, our students to know. Liz, thanks for putting health services and the immunizations um, websites in the, in the chat. Um, I will also say that the Southern hospitality thing doesn't just pertain to food. It pertains to like asking for directions and stuff like that too. Um, I know a lot of new students are really nervous when they like come to campus and they're like, oh, I don't know where I'm going, but I don't want to ask. I can guarantee you, you're probably going to ask the person next to you and either they're just as lost as you are, or they are more than happy to tell you, oh, it's the third building on the left. Like just go past the building with the columns. It's on your left. It's perfectly normal. And if you catch an orientation assistant, it will make us glow because then we get to tell you more about like, oh, how was an orientation assistant? I've been waiting for this question because I obviously wait for that question. Um, so the people that ECU provides, like the students and the faculty, and they're just great and they're more than happy to help and answer any questions. Um, the one thing I will say is if you're living in the residence hall, be nice to the custodial workers. <laughs> they will do anything and everything for you and they're some of your best resources because a lot of them have been there longer than we've been alive. <laughs> so you are right there. One of my custodians now uh, in my hall was like my best friend. But for some reason, whenever she would clean the bathroom was when I had to go to the bathroom uh, and like she just knew so like we would bust out like I'll leave my room and she would just bust out laughing because like it's just I don't know I don't know why that's just how I was set up anyway um another thing I wanted to talk about with um um with getting involved and stuff um do it for you don't do things because of other people I assure you if there's something that you think is interesting and you don't have a friend already that wants to go with you there's someone else who's in that same boat who's probably going to go there by themselves. And, you know, that might be your best friend and you may miss out on that opportunity if you don't go just because you don't have anyone else to go with. This is a great time to go out and do things alone because you might meet people and, you know, build those bonds. I mean, we're all growing up. This is like the time to, you know, break out of your comfort zone. Um, so that's really, really important. Um, and if things are online, that's a lot easier to do. You know, you don't have to say, hey, come with me because you can just open your laptop. So, I mean, that's that's a plus, you know, so just don't be afraid or hesitant to do things that you think you may enjoy. That That's really key. And, uh, you know, like you're paying or some of y'all aren't some of y'all, you know, got that scholarship, but, you know, you're paying to be here. Um, you want to use all the resources that ECU provides for you, you know, because there are a surplus of them and, you know, just don't miss out on things that may potentially be the best thing that ever happened to you.
Carrington brings up a great point about resources. Um, there are so many resources at ECU. I've worked at a lot of different colleges and universities, and they have all been fantastic for different reasons, but I still can't get over sometimes the amount of resources that are here at ECU that are available to students. Um, the only thing you have to do is you are the one that has to go out and, and access them. You know, they're not going to show up at your residence hall door saying, knock, knock, it's the University Writing Center. I'm here to help you write your paper. You're going to have to go um, seek them out. Um, and that is where our website comes into play. Um, the ECU website has all this information. Um, all you have to do is go to ecu.edu.com. There's a little search bar at the top. Put in what you're looking for and it'll pull it up for you. So if you're looking for the University Writing Center, you're looking for the Pirate Academic Success Center, you're looking how to get engaged in clubs and organizations. It's, it's like a Google search. It's right there at your fingertips. Um, so it, that's why it, it drives me bonkers sometimes when I hear from students that are like, I'm so bored, I don't have anything to do, or I didn't know where to go for, for help. Um, it's not like you have to track out in the middle of the 90 degree heat and knock on people's doors and going, tell me, tell me where this office is or tell me where this is. It's really right there at your fingertips on your phone or on your laptop, on your iPad. Um, you can find it. And as Ashley mentioned, if you don't want to do it through your computer, your iPhone, your, your phone, um, ask somebody. Because I'm telling you, students, I've never seen anything like it. Even when I get lost on campus, well, when I first got here, I'd look at people and be like, I don't know where I'm going. And students would be happy to tell me, you know, oh, you're going to go right up this way or that's the building on the left. People are so friendly here at um, ECU. When we say you're a, a part of Pirate Nation, you really do become a part of this campus community and this college community. Um, so don't be scared. You know, that's the one piece of advice. I shouldn't say don't be scared. Of course, you're going to be scared. You're doing something new. Um, but don't feel out of place by asking for help or seeking out these resources because they're there. And people, once you get in the door, people are like so happy to see you. Oh, you're here for help. Let me help you. So um, really make sure that, you know, if you if you need that help, go ahead and ask for it because people are willing to give it to you. All right, always anything you want to ask? Attendees, any questions that you may want to throw at us? Okay. Well, we're thrilled that you joined us this evening. Thank you so much. Um, we definitely encourage you to visit our website um, orientation at EC, or sorry, orientation.ecu.edu um, for more information. We do have resources on that page for freshmen. It's where all our recordings are for the live sessions we've been able to record and hold this summer. Again, just a reminder, this has been recorded this evening and this will um, pop up on the official ECU YouTube channel once we get it um, closed captioned. Um, oh, it looks like we got a Q&A, hold on. The plan is to still attend school in person. Absolutely. Um, school is still set to start in, in two weeks, August 10th. Um, I have not heard any different. Um, and I will say that ECU has been amazing at letting, um, letting us all know when those changes are coming in place. Of course, as we know, this is a rapidly evolving situation. We've been saying that pretty much daily since March. So I do encourage you to keep an eye on the ECU um, website and the ECU um, social media pages, our social media pages. So if anything changes in the next two weeks, um, you will certainly be able to find that out. But um, as far as I'm aware, we are a go to still be in person. Um, um, there are protocols in place if you look at the Return to Pirate Nation website, um, there's student guides, there's faculty staff guides, there's community guides about how we're gonna handle social distancing and masking and um, different things. Um, Gretchen has also asked, is there a plan ECU has if a student gets sick with COVID? Um, there is a plan. I believe it is laid out in more detail in um, the Return to Pirate Nation guide. Um, and they're still kind of working out some of the details. What I do know, if a student is living in the residence hall 
and get sick with COVID. Um, I believe, I'm not sure that the contracts have been signed yet, but um, ECU was working with um, some off-campus sites, off-campus apartments that those students would be able, who have COVID would be able to move to and um, get help with Liz. So they did, they were able to get those off-campus apartments if that is possible, um, if a student does end up having that, but their main thing was if they do have it, they request that that student, if at all possible, just go home. So that way it would prevent that more of a cost and prevent them from spraying it anywhere else and for them to be more comfortable at their own house and to be um, separated. Absolutely. And Liz has put the return of Arab nation. Um, link in in the chat so it's return of pirate nation dot ecu dot edu um, so that is um, being constantly updated so even though it's a pdf and it's a website and the and the pdfs are on the website they're constantly updating it i have a friend who works in creative services and that's pretty much what they're they're doing on the daily is making sure that there's signage and messaging and flyers and all sorts of information going out so people know what's going on and how we're going to reopen as safely as possible. So I encourage you to check out that website and um, Carrington also put it in the Q and A. So thanks Carrington um, to make sure that, um, you know, we're doing what we can to be, bring everybody back as safely as possible um, and keep everybody up to date. And we know that's especially important for our, our parents who are out of state um, you know, and sending their children here to ECU. Um, so Gretchen said, I know some schools here in Massachusetts are online only. Some are not allowing students to leave campus to go out of state and return to campus during the semester to avoid exposure to people during this time. Does ECU have any restrictions? Not that I'm aware of. Um, they are do they are asking that students um, from off campus, don't visit the residence halls. So if your student makes a friend who lives on say 10th street, um, that friend cannot come to the residence hall to visit your student in the residence hall. They're asking to keep just kind of who lives in that residence hall, who lives there. Um, but as far as people traveling, um, you know, they're right now, I think they're just asking for people to, to use their best judgment, um, but there have been no major restrictions like we've seen up north so i hope that that answers your question and again i think the return of pirate nation um, information um, will also that website will also give you some of that information but everybody's nodding at me so i'm, I'm thinking i'm not the only one in thinking that there's no restrictions at this point for travel right Yes, uh, yep, Gretchen said um, things are very strict, so we're kind of scared. I, I definitely understand. I, I still have family and friends in New York and I know how strict they've been. Um, and so um, it's it's a scary time, not to lie. So I definitely encourage you to, um, like I said, keep your eye on the website and you can certainly always call our office. Um, we're still, some of us are still working from home, but we do have somebody in the office every day um, of the week so you can certainly give us a call and our number is 252-328-4713 um, and you can just ask us what's going on you know another good resource is the dean of students office too if you can't get a hold of us yeah i can definitely understand that gretchen also shared her husband is worried that my daughter will call us and say she's being sent home in september because of covid surge or something um and i certainly would love to say that's not going to happen and i'm hoping with all my heart that's not going to happen but i think like like i've mentioned it's such a rapidly evolving situation um you know we just we got to do the best we can to maintain social distancing keep wearing our masks um, washing our hands um, and just doing our best and, and hoping that doesn't happen. Um, and just, yeah, yeah, I definitely understand that concern. I think it's one we we're all concerned about, even even us local folks. 
is, is wondering, how, you know, what's going to happen next. So I think we're all just kind of crossing our fingers and toes and and hoping for the best and, and doing our part to make sure that we're we're doing what we we can do to keep each other safe. So we definitely understand that. Um, but like I said, you know, Gretchen, if anything comes up or anybody, anything comes up, please, please contact us. Um, we're happy to help and um you know get your questions answered and if you can't get a hold of anybody else um you know give us a call and we'll we'll do what we can to connect you with the right people and um you know if it's not our office that handles it we'll find the office that does and we'll connect you to those right those people and and we'll help you out um that is one thing i do want to make clear is that it's it feels a little scary right now and you're not sure who to call or what to do but ecu is a very caring community so Whoever you can get on the phone, even if it's you know randomly the financial aid office and you don't have a financial aid question, but if you contact somebody in financial aid and you're like, look, I just need to talk to somebody about this, who do I call? They will make sure you get to the right person. And I think that's universal across campus. So um, we'll just keep we'll keep our doing this. Yep. Um, the phone number for the Office of Student Transition it's, is 252. Okay, you got it. 328-4173. Yep. All right, y'all. Gretchen, I hope we made you feel a little bit better. I know how scary it is right now, but like I said, you know, we're here for you. And if you have questions or concerns, certainly reach out. The students are certainly available for your daughter as well. Um, have them follow her them, have her follow them on Instagram <laughs> under ECU transitions. They're all they all have OA Instagrams and they will be definitely happy to help as well. So all right, everyone. Um, without any further ado, thank you again so much. And we hope to see you um, very shortly in two short weeks. So thank you. I'm so glad, Gretchen. I'm glad you're feeling better about things. We're happy to help her once she. I lost my words. We're happy to help. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Thanks.